watching this KTV original programming. These episodes are part of a project by the Sun Moon Group. We're volunteers, nonprofit, and our intention is to enrich our community's health, Mankato and North Mankato, with some programming about the wonderful health benefits of yoga that can be done at home or any place that you like. And I've called in some area experts to help me with this and the one of the first people I thought of was Miss Carly Hopper, a good friend of mine for many years. She works up at the university. She's got some great ideas for us today. But I wanted to ask her first a little bit about her job up at the college. So Carly, what do you do at Mankato State University, or Minnesota State University, Mankato? Mankato. Yes, good. Um, I coordinate the fitness and wellness programs in the Office of Campus Recreation. I've been there for a few years. Um, I love what I do up there. I get paid to exercise. Um, I also teach adjunct in the Human Performance Department where I teach yoga classes for credit and a variety of other um, one credit activities classes. So I, I love what I do. So Carly, what are you going to share with us today? Well, Mona, today we're going to practice some strength training poses um, that I have in my own practice and that I usually teach when I have teach classes down here. Um, strength training poses are great to help increase um, strength in our muscles, but also increase bone density, which changes a lot as people get older. So um, we're going to get started, and I would love for you guys to join us. Mona and I are going to stand up, and if you're sitting down, just join us and stand up with us here today. So Mona's going to go on her mat. I'm going to stay on my mat, um, but I'm going to kind of walk back and forth a little bit because I'm going to maybe point out some um, important alignment cues that um, I would like Mona to pay attention to and for those of you guys at home paying attention to. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to chime our little bells and that'll be our beginning right here. Good. So Mona and I are actually going to be turning and facing this direction. So I'm going to ask Mona to come on up to the top of her mat. And everyone today, we're going to have our, we're going to start with our feet about hip width or so apart. So the first pose that we're going to practice is called a chair pose. So with your feet hip width or so apart, it would be best if you had socks and shoes off, just so that you can kind of feel your toes underneath your mat. I'm going to ask you to bring your hands right to your heart center. So this is our Moten pose. This is where we are beginning here. The first pose, like I said, is going to be our chair pose. So the very first thing that we're gonna do is just bend our knees and just sit down a little bit. And I want you just to pause here as you breathe. I'm gonna walk around to your Mona just a little bit and point out some really important things. She's doing a wonderful job with keeping her knees in great alignment here. Your knees are either gonna be right over your ankles or slightly forward a little bit. You should be able to see your toes. So if Mona were to peek down, or if at home you guys were able to peek down, you should be able to see your toes at all times. And if you're not seeing your toes, it means you need to shift your bottom back a little bit. A lot of other cues, but we're gonna take a short break here. So Mona, just slowly stand on up, relax your arms, and those of you at home do the same thing and just shake out those legs or maybe even tap on out through those legs a little bit. Good. So the great thing about yoga for strength poses that I like is we do things more than one time. So we're start to build a, we start to build a little bit of strength throughout the body. So again, Mona's gonna start with her feet hip width or so apart. She's gonna stay here. I'm gonna show you another variation that's a little bit more challenging. So very gently go ahead and bend your knees, shift your bottom back. She's lifting up through her heart She's relaxing the back of her neck so her chin is down. And she has a, a nice, the lower back is really nice. It's not too arched. So I'm gonna let Mona stay there. Her feet are hip width or so apart. To make this pose a little bit more challenging, you're gonna bring your feet together. And that'll challenge your balance a little bit more. And another option to bring this, to add a little bit more of a challenge is extending those arms up towards the sky. And again, we'll pause here just for a moment. And then bring your hands back to the heart. If they're not, slowly stand on up and relax the arms and just shake it out. Good. We're gonna take that one more time and I'm actually gonna show you an option that we're gonna add a chair into this practice. So, when you practice this chair at home, if you had a hard time balancing, you kind of felt like you were wobbly, adding a chair or even being against the wall is also gonna be a really great thing that you can do to help yourself from not falling over. So whether your hands are on your chair or you have your hands at your heart, I'm gonna ask you to bend the knees and sit down into your chair pose again, or a squat. And even though Mona has her hands on that chair in front of her, her knees are still in great alignment. She should still be able to see her toes and by the looks of it, she is, okay? So you can have the chair in your pose. You can have the feet together. You can have the feet depart, apart. You can also extend your arms. So the position that I'm practicing is gonna be a little bit more challenging than what Mona is practicing. And we'll hold it here just for a moment. 
And then slowly, everyone, bring your hands to your heart at home and Mona. Slowly stand up and release the arms and just shake on all through those arms and legs. Nice job, everybody. So I'm going to move this chair out of the way a little bit. Our next pose is also going to be another standing pose, and it's going to be a lunge position. So we will start at the top of our mat. We're going to bring our hands to our hips this time, just so we keep alignment with the shoulders and the hips. Your left foot's going to stay here, and you're going to take that right foot, and you're going to step it back. You're going to step it back just a little bit of ways. And if you can be on the ball of that back foot, I'd ask you to do that here. That front knee is right over your ankle, and our shoulders are right over our hips. Hands can come to the heart. And I want you just to pause right where you're at for a moment. And again, if you need a little bit of help with stability and balance, you can always take that chair really close to you and place a hand right on the chair or even a hand right against the wall. Good. And as you can see, her upper body is nice and long. She's pulling her belly button in nice and tight to engage her core, which works on the belly and also the back. Go ahead and bring your hands back to your heart here and then slowly step that back foot up, whether it's one step or more than that, it all depends on your body. Go ahead, release your arms down by the sides for a moment, and again, just shake it out a little bit. Good. So that is a unilateral pose. So that means we practice it on one side, and for balance, we wanna definitely do that on the other side. So we're still at the top of our mat. We're gonna bring our hands back to our hips. This time, your right foot is gonna stay forward, and you're gonna step that left foot back. Good. Good. So if you use the chair the first side, you may want to turn the body around and use your chair or bring the chair on the other side of your mat. You can keep your hands at your heart. You can bring your hands, sorry, you can keep your hands on your hips or bring your hands to the heart. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, you extend the arms up. You can also inch that back leg back a little bit and sink down a little bit deeper. If you sink down deeper, it's going to make the pose a little bit more challenging. However, this alignment piece right here of the knee right over the ankle is huge. That's safety of the knee joint um, and it's alignment. It's alignment at its best right here. And Mona's doing a great job pulling the belly in tight and relaxing the bottom part of her chin. Slowly bring your hands back to your hips, everyone. And then gently step that back foot up. Good, nice job. And then just shake it out a little bit. Good, okay. We're gonna take one more standing pose. So I'm gonna have Mona turn to the front of the room you guys can still face my direction. And we're actually gonna take out a, a wide stance, so a little bit wider than the hips. We're all gonna start with our hands on our hips and rotate those toes out to the sides. So if just doing this, all of a sudden you have no idea where your balance went, you might wanna grab the chair and just place it right in front of you, okay? And then I'm gonna ask you to bend your knees here. Good. So you should be able to wiggle your toes. Sometimes you need to fix your pants when you're in this position. And if you were to peek to the sides, you should be able to see the toes on the outsides of your knees. So I want you to hold this for a moment. Mona's doing a wonderful job of keeping her torso upright. Top of the head is reaching up. Your tailbone is reaching down. And I'm gonna ask Mona and you, and you at home just to bring your hands to your heart and see how that feels. And this pose is very different than our chair pose because instead of shifting our butt back, we're shifting our body right down to the middle. Let's take a little break. So just slowly straighten the legs and relax the body here. Sometimes it feels good to shake on out through those legs. Good, doing all right? Mm -hmm. Good. So we're gonna take this again. So again, making sure you can see the toes the entire time. Torso is lifted, bringing the rib cage up away from the hips, slowly bend the knees, and go ahead and sit down. Good, good. This looks great. So Mona's doing a wonderful job of relaxing through the shoulders, having the knees right over the ankles, pulling the belly button in nice and tight. And she's gonna stay here like you are just for another moment or so and just pausing here as you breathe. And then slowly just straighten the legs. And again, maybe just shake out through those legs just for a moment. So we're gonna take one more time and I'm gonna give you an option for your arms if you wanna take it. And maybe even to bring it down a little bit deeper to make this pose a little bit more challenging. So Mona's gonna keep her hands at her heart. We're both gonna bend our knees just like you at home. And you can pause here. You can sink down a little bit deeper if you like. If you choose to do that, still make sure that those knees are over the ankles and you're opening your knees up. You can also extend the arms to the sky potentially and bring those arms out to the side. Bring those arms out to the side. Good, and again, just pausing here. So again, strength in the lower body, also the core, a little bit of the arms here. Good, nice form. And then slowly just stand up, bring the hands to touch and bring them right back to your heart. Good, and let's just walk those feet in. 
So that is the end of our three standing poses. I'm gonna ask Mona to come down to her mat and you at home come down to your mat and take a little child's pose. So I'm gonna have your heads facing the direction that I'm pointing and Mona's down at the back of her mat. So this is just a little bit of a break. So like I said, the first three poses we practiced, they were standing poses, a little bit of balance in there, but a lot of strength for the lower body and also for the core. The next pose that we're gonna practice is going to be a plank position. I'm gonna show a little bit more of a challenging version. Mona's gonna show another version that's still quite challenging, but it's gonna give you an option if you need to come down to that level, okay? So from the child's pose, alignment is important in this pose. Even though we're on the ground and we're not standing, alignment is still important. So let's go ahead and extend those arms long in front of you. And I'd like you to put a little body weight into the pointer finger and the thumb. And then what I'm gonna ask Mona to do, and you at home, is just to shift your body forward, keeping on the knees, bringing your shoulders right over your wrist joints. And just pausing here as you breathe. Good. So if you want a little bit more of a challenge, you're gonna curl the toes underneath, and you're gonna lift those knees up. So you can choose to stay here. You can also set the knees down. So I'll talk quickly in this pose because I'm guessing you may not wanna hold it very long. Shoulders, elbows, and wrist joints are stacked. That's huge. That is important for alignment. Nothing is sinking in the belly. She's pulling that in, and there's no bottom in the sky. So she has a nice long line from the top of her head to her heels. Good. So let's slowly set the knees down. Just take a little bit of a break and go ahead and shift it back. And this is also a great opportunity to rotate through the wrist joints a little bit. Sometimes people um, when they practice poses like this, they said that their wrist joints hurt. So that's why I pointed, bringing, pointed out the importance of bringing a little attention into the inside of the hand, the pointer finger and the thumb, mm -hmm. so that we're not just shifting into the hands, okay? So we're gonna practice that plank pose one more time. Mona's gonna stay on her knees. I'm gonna come on up to my toes, and I'd like you to join us at home. So go ahead and shift the body forward, and pausing here as you breathe. Nice, long alignment through the spine, Looking down, chest is parallel to the earth. Shoulders, elbows and wrists are stacked. Good. And then very gently go ahead and take a child's pose. Just shift the body back. Shift back into your child's pose, good. So that is a plank pose where we are on both hands, both knees, or on our feet. The next variation we're gonna do is called the sidearm balance. It's one of my favorite poses. Um, and again, it is a unilateral pose, so that means we practice it on one side. Yep, we have, we have to practice it on the other side, just to keep everything nice and balanced for muscular strength. So, Mona's gonna show a little bit more of a, a lower variation. I'm gonna give you a little bit more of a challenge variation. Let's try it. Right. So, we're gonna find our, our plank that we just practiced before, so arms are extended. Go ahead, shift the body forward. So you can stay on your knees, or you can come on up to the toes. If you're on your toes, you're pressing the heels back behind you and you're reaching the top of the head forward. And we're gonna open up our torso towards your direction. So Mona's gonna set her knee down, her left knee down. I'm gonna keep my hips up. You can bring the right arm to the hip or you can bring your right arm up to the sky. So just pause here for a moment as you breathe. See how long and open she is from her fingertips to her fingertips. Shoulder, elbow, and wrist are in alignment, which is huge. And just pause here for a moment as you breathe. Good. And then very slowly, we're gonna bring that right hand to touch the ground, and we're gonna find our center plank. And we're gonna practice this on the other side. So we're gonna be facing away from you for a moment, but the options are still going to be the same. So I'm gonna start off on my toes. Mona's gonna stay on her right knee this time. And we're gonna open our left arm up towards the sky. And again, your left arm can stay high. You can also bring your left hand to your left hip. And another option, if Mona wants to show it to you, would be lifting that left leg up off the ground. So there's always gonna be a variation for a plank for every body, okay? And then slowly bring that leg down if you lifted it. Go ahead and find your center plank for a moment. And then we're gonna take a brief child's pose. So just shift the body back. And again, another opportunity to rotate through the wrist joints a little bit, just to relax that area. Good, okay. So we're gonna take a cross body lift. This is a great pose that we're gonna practice on our hands and knees that is great for working the tiny little muscles that run up and down the spine that help aid in balance and, and stability as no matter what age you are, this is such a great pose, okay? So I'm gonna ask Mona to come onto her hands and knees. 
And as you can see here, she is engaging her core. She's pulling her belly in tight, so nothing is kind of sinking down. Her back is, has a neutral spine to it, so she's not rounding up or letting anything sink here. I'm gonna ask everyone at home and Mona to extend your right arm in front of you. And this right arm is coming right up from your shoulder. So just a nice long line. So if you're feeling balanced, you keep that right arm where it is and you're gonna extend that left leg behind you now this time. Good. And as you notice, it's not about how high you're lifting that leg. This leg is coming straight up from your hip or it might even come a little bit closer down towards the ground. Many people will walk by a room and see that people practicing this pose and think, oh, that's easy. And then they try it. And a lot of times you might feel really wobbly in this position and that's perfectly normal. Go ahead and set those limbs down. Take a brief child's pose, just kind of shift the body back for a moment. And again, another opportunity to rotate through the wrist joints if you like. So again, this is another unilateral pose. So we're gonna practice it on each side. So let's go ahead and find our tabletop position. And as you notice before she gets started, shoulders, elbows, and wrists are stacked. Hips are right over those knees. Let's extend that left arm in front of us this time. Good, so again, it's a nice long line and her palm is facing your direction. And now let's take that right leg and extend it behind you. Good. And as you notice, her back has a nice still neutral spine to it and she's pulling her belly button in nice and tight towards the spine. So that helps keep the core in nice and tight. Good, so just pausing here as you breathe. And then very gently, go ahead and set the limbs down. And let's take a little bit of a child's pose. Good, good. It's important to take these little breaks in between to give our body a break and also to rotate through the wrist joints a little bit. Good, so we have one more pose we're gonna practice here today. And this is going to be a boat pose. So it's a great pose also again for our belly and our back. So from the position that you're in, I'm just gonna have you sit down. And we're still gonna face this direction because I'm gonna show you an important alignment piece um, when, I pointed out, when I pointed out on Mona. So we're gonna start off sitting on our sit bones, which is the bony part of our butt, which my theory is we all have a bony butt, it's just underneath a little bit of layers sometimes. So we can find it just by kind of shifting around. So the bony part of your butt and your tailbone, it's kind of like a tripod. So you sit nice and tall, hands will go behind the back of the legs. You draw the shoulders down and you lift up through the heart. Good, and as you can notice in Mona and myself here for a moment, our chins are parallel to the earth. We're gonna tip the spine back and you can keep the feet on the ground. You can lift the feet up like Mona is showing you. You can also extend the arms, but wherever you're at, I want you to breathe. If you're feeling a lot of tension in the back of the neck, just relax that chin down towards the throat a little bit more. So Carly, do you want me to let go here? Or? You can keep your hands behind the back of the legs or you can extend those arms in front of you. That's a great question. Good. And one thing that I think is wonderful in this position is she has such a nice, nice flat back here. So if you're practicing this at home and you feel like you're rounded and crunched forward, just think of lifting your heart up a little bit. Good. So let's take a little break, set your feet on the ground, dive your arms underneath your legs for a moment, and then just round through the back, relaxing the forehead down. Good. Good. So we're gonna take that same pose again. So we start with our feet on the ground. Once again, you find your balance on your sit bones, hands behind the back of the legs, relax the chin down, lift the heart, tip the spine back. So it's about keeping the spine nice and tall and just tipping. Feet can be on the ground, feet can lift. Arms can extend. The longer the arms, the longer the legs, the more challenging this pose gets. So you decide, but if you extend those arms up really tall, and all of a sudden you're sinking, then you need to backtrack. Then hands will go back to the legs and you find that balance again. Good, good, nice job. So once again, let's just set our feet on the ground, keep your knees bent, dive those arms underneath the legs, kind of pull against those legs a little bit and just round through the back. Good. And then release the arms and we'll take this boat pose just one more time, one more time. Hey Carly, what about that one where you hold your toes? The one where you hold your toes. Yeah, we can try that, we can definitely try that one. So this is just another variation of holding your toes. So again, any variation that we add to the boat pose, it's still important of keeping your spine tall like this and just tipping. So anything of adding your arms, grabbing your toes, if you lose that alignment and you're collapsing, then that means you need to backtrack. But yeah, we'll try grabbing our toes here. So we start with our feet on the ground, tip the spine back, 
Maybe you lift the feet. Maybe you extend the legs. Maybe you use your peace fingers and grab your big toes. And you bring your body up. Good. So again, if you start to collapse or you roll over, just tuck and roll and come on back and join us <laughs> because it happens at times. But again, lifting the heart, pulling the belly button in nice and tight, and making sure you're breathing. And then very gently, if the legs are straight, begin to bend the knees, set the feet on the ground. And one more time, let's just dive those arms underneath the legs, round through the back. And then gently just relax the arms, bring the torso upright. And Mona and I are gonna turn and face you. So we're gonna bring our class just to a little bit of a close. So you can sit cross-legged, you can sit any direction that you want. And what I'd like you to do for a few moments here is just bring your hands to your heart. You can keep the eyes open, you can close the eyes, or you can just take your gaze right down towards the earth. And just take a few moments here and bring attention into your breathing. Taking a couple deep breaths in and some deep breaths out. Good. Letting your body cool down a little bit as that breath comes in and as that breath leaves the body. Good. Giving ourselves a little bit of quiet time in our busy lives is so important. When we say we don't have time to sit for a moment, that's really when we need to make our time to sit for a moment and just be our own self on our own mat just for a few moments. And again, just breathing. Good. So again, whether your eyes are opened or closed, we'll be here just for a few more moments. And again, bringing attention into your breathing. And I want you to think about one thing in your body, one thing in your life, one thing related to your family that you love. What is one thing that you love about yourself, your life, people around you? And remind yourself of that daily. And I will end by saying thank you and namaste. Thank you, Carly. Namaste.